Good morning. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. Today's topic is surface fishing for carp. Carp love to feed on the surface or just subsurface. It's a much overlooked style of fishing that I've loved to pursue for quite a few years now, all year round. It can be a challenge. some months especially winter months carp aren't moving as much but as you may well know we still have sunny days in every season throughout the year and those are the days when the carp like to come up move around the surface and pick off food. Carp fall into two categories in my mind. Those with extensible mouths and those without extensible mouths. What do I mean? by extensible mouths common carp mirror carp ghost carp all have extensible mouths when feeding on the bottom they don't have to go nose down into the ground to pick up a bait that can remain almost horizontal extend the mouth into a suction device and suck up any bait that takes the fancy those without extensible mouths i.e. grass carp they have to stand almost on the heads to eat when fishing from a lake bed does this matter when we considering surface fishing for carp well, yes, it does, because the action of this type of mouth, be it extensible or non-extensible, will govern how we rig up and present a bait to catch carp at the surface or just below the surface. When we think the carp are in the upper layers of the water, it's usually because that's where the warmth of the day is encouraging the carp to be. It's not always right at the surface, but if we have a bit on the surface presented properly 
then they're more likely to make that journey from the layer the cruising at or sat at to the surface to sample our bait now the carp obviously doesn't have hands all it senses once it decides on a bait that's attractive all its senses are in its mouth so things it puts in its mouth it doesn't always take further back in its mouth crush or digest or swallow some things it comes across it takes inside its mouth tastes and then ejects if it's a carp on a commercial water and it's been caught before it may well sample a bit numerous times before it decides that's the one it's going to actually ingest they do have teeth at the back of the mouth in the throat area these are for crunching down things that it can't just mush up and swallow if you go to water that has crayfish in then you can understand that this is how carp get to enjoy those crayfish where they can't just suck them in or swallow them and digest getting back to our surface baits let's consider the grass carp initially the grass carp doesn't have this extensible mouth so just as it stands on its head to feed on the lake bed it points almost vertically upward when taking a surface bait anywhere between 45 degrees and vertically down a typical approach angles for grass carp these carp may be some of the largest species you'll ever come across when fishing commercial carp venues but there's some of the gentlest takes in fishing believe me once you've got a carp that's a grass carp hooked things change from being a gentle take to an explosive reaction these memorable fights will stay with you through all your fishing all your years of fishing so this gentle take as they suck a bait in with their rubbery lips this gentle take can elude many a bite alarm or any other indication I fish with my rods tip high 
if you were to look at any other of my videos you'll see the butt of the rod is touching the ground and the tip of the rod is pointing skyward yes I use bite alarms I rest the rod at an angle against a bite alarm but I don't solely rely on just this bite alarm to indicate bites my 10 foot rods two and a half pound test curve have fine enough tips that I can see lots of indication sometimes even before the bite alarm registers my tried and trusty Delkim old school bite alarms very sensitive very trustworthy but the rod tip can still indicate by nodding that the grass carp is interested I've caught fish by picking the rod up reeling in at a nod I've also lost fish by picking up reeling in not having set the hook I'm not talking about a full-blown strike where you pull the carp's head off that's not going to achieve much at all except maybe damaged fish's mouths I'm talking about setting the hook as anglers we go fishing to catch fish not to talk about the one that got off the one that got away getting back to the grass carp having soft mouths I encourage you to have very sharp hooks a wide gape I like to use a size 8 reputable make definitely not fine wire I don't want this straightening out so I would expect to see the indication on the rod tip pick the rod up lean into it to the point where I've certainly got contact I've straightened out any bow in the line from surface fishing and then set the hook this is absolutely paramount how hard do you strike I'm afraid I can't help you with that, that's experience. Suffice to say, if you strike to the point where you feel a slight resistance, that's what you want to feel. That's enough. No more, no less. If you feel a slight resistance, during your light strike you've set the hook bearing in mind we're fishing with barbless hooks at this point for fish safety if you were to just haul it in you might well be loosening the hook hold 
should you not have the same pressure all the way in. So hauling is not the answer to landing grass carp. A key method is steady pressure all of the time from setting the hook to landing it. Again, what equates to steady pressure? I'm back to reminding you that experience will teach you this. Occasionally, carp of all varieties will swim towards you. And you might even think you've lost it, only to find when you turn the handle on the reel a few times that the pressure's applied and you realise your carp's still on. If you've set the hook properly, you'll be able to recover from this situation and carry on. Obviously we need a correctly set drag so that the carp is able to take line from your reel below the breaking strain of that line. This comes back to matching the test curve of the rod and the line strength that you're using and the clutch setting. If you haven't watched it or you are a beginner I encourage you to have a look at my video regarding setting up and using a bait runner reel. It's 15 minutes video which will help you understand how to set up and use a bait runner successfully. No guesswork, all accurate settings. Getting back to surface fishing for carp. The grass carp will tell you when it's took it, it will run with it and as soon as it gets close to you or the net it'll go ballistic. Be prepared, have a nice big carp net which you should have at most commercial venues anyway part of the rules on decent venues that you have a wide landing net. I think we've covered the grass carp now. Let's consider carp with extensible mouths and how they take bait. Because they have this ability to suck baits from quite a long distance away you'll find that your surface bait will suddenly disappear sometimes to reappear and then disappear yet again this playing with your bait leads you to think you should sit on your hands, not virtually, but just hold fire and not strike into everything you thought might be a fish on. If you were to see the profile of the carp feeding, it would look something like this.
we see the head of the carp, its backbone, its eyes, a typical bait on the surface, and here's its extensible mouth. This is my model of the surface as it erupts when a carp takes your bait. In this instance, I've just cut a, a boily type bait up so it represents a floating bait. One of my favourite bits is tiger bread. How on earth? Can a carp enjoy, eat, or be caught eating such a large bait? When I cast a piece like this out into a lake, it's dunked into the margin for a couple of seconds if I'm freelining or it's cast out into the lake completely dry and fresh and springy if I'm zigging a piece on the surface or just subsurface getting back to how on earth can a cat possibly be caught using such a large bait. I'll put up a video of a carp attacking a piece of bread and then subsequently being caught. So you'll see that the size of the bait doesn't put them off in fact it encourages them no they can't take it all in one go but you'll be staggered how quickly they can turn something like this into a bite sized chunk When the carp is taking bread from the surface, it can either attack it from underneath, sucking with lots of vigour. So one minute it's on the surface, the next minute it's sucked under and it's like a whirlpool talk about the Bermuda Triangle and ships and planes disappearing if you were to watch a big carp eating a big piece of tiger bread well it's exciting to say the least and that's why I do it year after year I suppose I should mention my BBP bread rig 
which would be useful if anybody was to adopt this method have a search across my channel I'll put links in the description below for my zig rig and BBP bread rig so to sum up surface baits if they have extensible mouths they will suck the bait in maybe eject it only to suck it in again don't react too quickly be certain that they have it in the mouth if you were to strike the grass carp with non extensible mouth can take it from underneath so it will just disappear watch for those soft takes on your rod tip don't just trust your bite alarms hope you've enjoyed this insight into my version of surface fishing for carp join me again soon thanks for watching